another week, another run. This time, as promised, 7,000. And honestly, this one was a really fun one to do. Four passive, we grab seven Heathcliff, four extra Rapture on Fatal Attacks, G Corp Gregor, since we can actually afford Gluttony Healing passive this time, and our usual duo of LCB Mersault and Zwei Sinclair for 20% damage reduction. Let's talk about 7 Faust. First, and most important, self sufficient fluid sack. Yup. This is third ID Faust has gotten that can get all resources for Fluid Sack on her own. Albeit with a little bit of struggle, since Lust is hiding behind using her defense skill, but it still can fuel Fluid Sack on its own, which is a major boon and will utilize it a lot. Other than that, very solid clashing on her skill 2 and 3. And all of her skills have a hidden passive that releases high amount of happy juices into my brain. I mean, look at her. Project Moon keeps getting the visuals better and better with each ID, and I am all for it. But going back to the actual gameplay, 7 Faust solidifies 7 Association as a Rapture and Exploit Damage Type Weakness archetypes. Which, unfortunately, at this stage in the game, we severely need more Rapture support in general. It is not the best status condition as of now, and hopefully both 7 Faust and 7 Heathcliff are here to change it. Our first boss was negligible at best, but we love the city we live in. And for that, we are rewarded with the one and only Grey Coat. Our first shop doesn't really have anything beneficial, so I decided to cash in all our extra cost into passives. I grabbed Chef Ryoshu, Ink Tang Honglu, and Seven Yisang for extra healing damage and clash power respectively. We heal up just in case, get ourselves into an elite plant node, make sure that this battle concludes in victory, and continue forward to an event node that rewards us with ashes to ashes for all those burns that we have. We let Sinclair pet the fox and that marks the end for floor 2. Time for the boss fight and to my annoyance it was a human fight against the Lobotomy Talisman Ego. Thankfully, this battle specifically becomes easier with each turn as enemies lose sanity, and with Fluid Sack and Grey Coat, we can hold ourselves healthy long enough for enemies to be in stagger range and finish them off one by one. We grab tomorrow's fortune, which, thanks heavens, did not make me choose it over anything useful to us, and invite LCCB Ishmael for more defense power, in case we need to ever go back to the last generator. Rokumorodia for extra slash damage, and Blade Lineage Otis for extra damage against low health enemies, hopefully help us activate our skill tree on kill effect. And with our first Picatula fight, you'll start noticing that after most of those, our last resources will go a bit higher each time. <laughs> However, we grab a Crown of Roses to boost up our Rupture even further, Sticky Mug for our skill tree, and another Picatula fight giving us Headless Portrait. Yet another event with our prayers answered, Coffee and Cranes, here to help us with resource generation. Third boss is here and it's Glupa. I love Glupa. Look at him, he's such a polite looking handsome boy. He is also very fun to fight, since he pretty much forcefully accelerates the fight by lowering our sanity at max speed. 
And a very important piece of knowledge that has to be considered here. Glupo is not here to kill us. It's not a difficult boss to overcome. He is here to make us corrode over and over and train us dry out of ego resources. If we're not careful with how we proceed this fight, we can get ourselves into negative ego resources, which would be catastrophic to us and very difficult to get back up from. We managed to get through our frog friend with our resource intact and only one distortion, so that counts as a big win for us. We get our hands onto Nebulizer, which will make our passive poise way juicier. And immediately are given a very hard choice in the shop. For Leaf Clover against Cigarette Holder. On one hand, Cigarette Holder would make our clashing so much better, considering how easy it is for us to generate poise. But on a second note, I realized it is not actually that easy to start a combat phase with poise for the effect to come and play, and 4 Leaf Clover would benefit from our skill 3 that's already overbuffed with all of those gluttony enhancing gifts. So ultimately, I went for the Clover. I finish my Sinner lineup with She Dawn for extra 10% slash damage, which now can be activated thanks to Coffee and Cranes, generating other resources for us. As we move forward, we grab Carmelia. At this stage, I'll be real. There is no fight that can ever threaten us. At all. Not even close. So I'll just show our victims and move on to the interesting fights from now on. Okay? Okay. <sighs> hey. You. E. A boss that on paper doesn't make sense when thinking. How do I solo it? Realistically, it is what is commonly known as a bitch to deal with. But we have our secret weapon that between all that fluid sack, some of you might have already forgotten. After all, we got it at the very start of the run. Ray coat. Normally, there would be no way for our Faust to heal up from the amount of damage KQE can do while we're captivated. But since we have total of three turns of breathing room in between captures, we can keep ourselves healthy enough to tank the hit. And to those who wonder, how did you end up not staggered? They'll damage below your stagger bar while you were grabbed. And the fact that we were grabbed is precisely a reason why we unstagger. For the rule is simple. You cannot stagger someone for the next turn if they were already staggered via depleting their stagger bar. And that goes both ways, not just for enemies. After a slow battle of attrition, we will be rapidly approaching our final boss, as floor 5 will not take long to clear. Given that no fight can challenge us before the boss itself. So I want to use this time to do some usual shilling. And thank you all for watching. Please leave a comment and subscribe. It feels great to have a channel that is steadily growing and I hope we can get it to grow even further together.
Currently, I'm aiming to get to at least 2,000 subscribers before year 2024. And given how much you guys seem to enjoy my content, it seems much more plausible than I could have ever expected it to be. So for that, thank you. With Railway being out next week, my content might slow down a little bit, especially for the solo runs. Since Railway 2 doesn't allow solo runs, but I will talk about it in detail in another shorter video soon, explaining it all, so stay tuned. As for the poll for the next ID, G Corp Otis has been decided which I can already tell you is gonna be a great run. But with all that out of the way, let's quickly wrap up the rest of the run so I can leave you to enjoy Floor 5 boss fight with all lose and tie. AQE rewards us with Children with a Flask, which is really good ego generation tool. Especially early on, but I wouldn't scoff at it here either. We got Melted Spring from the shop and switched up our Kurokumo Rodia with LCB Rodia for even more damage that will also apply to our Fluid Sack. Ashes to Ashes we got at the start of the run gets compensated with Dust to Dust at the end of it for the perfect burn combination that we totally can use. Before the fight, we will change Chef Ryoshu to LCB Ryoshu for extra 20% situational damage from hassle. That's about it. This is the run. I hope you enjoyed the video. As for the final battle, that was Axel. Enjoy. <laughs>